Okay, moving on. This up here in the top right section of your video is the recording panel. It has various options which will affect how FL Studio records. Now we'll choose a blank pattern for this. Okay. Um, one thing to know about FL Studio, when you record, you're always going to record the data into a given pattern. And it will be the pattern that you choose in either the selector on the screen, which uh, maps along to the playlist selector. It seems by choosing a pattern on the left from these bars, we will choose that pattern to record on. Now what this means is if I make a change to a knob, here watch, I'll just, I'll just, um, I don't really have any knobs to play with. I'll, let's see. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to record on pattern 9. And we're just going to flip this panning left to right. Do that again. Alright. So that's a very small thing. But now you can see that the panning knob is moving left to right. And that is the actual uh, data that we've recorded. You can go in and make small changes to it or do some adjustments to the scaling. Sort of uh, tweak the shape a little bit. But that's just an example. What we've done here is we've actually recorded a data only pattern. Now, a lot of people think of uh, pa the pattern sequencer as being only a collection of notes things that you know make sound, things that generate sound, and it's just a construction of musical elements, but there's a bit more to it. Because we can make these data-only patterns which only influence the sound, this means that a pattern can either be, for example, a musical noun, which is uh, you know something that would have sound to it. Oh, I don't have any sound. We can think of that as a musical noun. We can think of these data patterns as musical verbs because they make something happen. So this Now here comes an EQ sweep. A very simple. And you can see it happening right here. Now at this point I have automated a very simple effect which will simply turn the flanger on. You can think of this as a musical adjective. It's only going to influence the sound on this one particular instrument. So, uh, that was a quick collection of various musical nouns where we have either drums or a pattern of uh, pre-recorded uh, sampled material, something like that, or a piano roll which involves actual synthesized notes which are being affected by musical adverbs and musical, or I'm sorry, adjectives and musical verbs. A verb being something that is just a triggered effect and of course our data only patterns um, give us the sort of flexibility that, um, other th that is a bit elusive in FL Studio. Typically when you see when you see a pattern based sequencer like this and everything's aligned to very s strict um, quantization and strict blocks you tend to feel a bit limited in thinking that your music has to conform to these very uh, very arbitrarily strong grid lines and so on but it really doesn't have to. We can do quite a lot with your with the sequencing options available <clears throat> this uh, very strong musical verb coming up in red is what I call melting, and I probably would never use it in a song, but it's just an example of what you can do as um, a way to influence your track. So, um, you get the idea. And these patterns can be of any length, and any strength and value, and you can combine them fairly seamlessly. Uh, if I do it this way, we'll get not only our tempo shifting effect, but also the flange and our EQ sweeps. So, um, moving on, 
Uh, in fact, I didn't even talk about the recording panel. <laughs> this button right here, pattern and song, this is going to determine whether we're playing a pattern. As you see now, I'm playing my melting pattern, but there's no actual data behind it. So let's go back. If I choose pattern one, get that piano piece, now we know what pattern one is. Pattern two sounds like this. Pattern three. And now we have a drum, a drum and a synth track, or a flute track, whatever you want to call it. So as it repeats, you'll see it goes right back to the beginning. This is a pattern of only four beats of length. However, uh, this pattern, quite a bit longer. I think it's either either 32 or 16 beats in length, I'm not sure. But um, clearly, clearly it doesn't fit within the, the confines of the channel or the step sequencer unless I expand it to match. Anyway, um, huh. I was talking about this recording panel. The first option determines whether or not to accept uh, piano notes from our computer keyboard, which means you can use the letter keys on your keyboard to simulate a piano. And it does work quite well if you select uh, a pattern which has musical um, playability. Those, that was just using the letter keys. It does work. The metronome determines whether or not we're going to hear a counting element. That will just help us get a, uh, a rhythm if we're playing from scratch. We don't have any beat laid down. This 3, 2, 1 countdown will give us a sort of a warm-up period before we actually start recording. I think. Should. Maybe it only works in song mode. Huh. Oh, because I'm not recording. If I'm recording, it will wait. And then it actually starts recording. So that's just a, a nice little cue for you. The other option is to wait until you actually hit a key before it starts recording. Now it's going to wait for me, but as soon as I tap a key, a key that actually has a note on it, I guess, yeah, as soon as I hit a key that can play a note, now it starts to record. And there you see I've recorded some garbage. Uh, this note, or this option, it says blend it recorded notes with existing data. This will prevent you from having too many notes all jumbled up together in the same space. It'll combine them into one long continuous note. Step editing mode is something I don't use very often, but what it is, what it's designed to do is give you a sort of a note by note control of your song, but you have to uh, activate it. Let's see, how does this work? Sorry, I'll demonstrate step editing mode in, in a different tutorial. These two options at the very end determine whether or not we want our playlist to keep up with our music. For example, when it plays, will it auto scroll or not? This determines whether it auto scrolls or not. In reason, that would be called follow song. And this top right pattern is one that's uh, very powerful or this top right option, you'll use it quite frequently. This determines whether or not we're playing a piece, um, how do I say this? This will determine whether or not if we play a piece which is longer than our beat, should it extend the piece or should it repeat and allow us to add notes, okay? A demonstration would look like this. If we record into a blank channel, now I'm in record mode. Now notice I just made three passes with um, three different chunks of notes all added in. It kept repeating for me. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the rep repeat mode off. No such luck. It will continue on the pattern for as long as we keep playing. So this is good when you're composing for an entire song or when you want to do a freestyle piece. If you're a really good keyboardist, pianist, you'll use this option off probably 